I'm David Levin, and this is Pop Goes the Culture, the behind-the-scenes stories and anecdotes of your favorite TV shows from the people who were there. First, just a friendly reminder to subscribe. Today, Brady Bunch creator Sherwood Schwartz tells us about casting the Brady kids, his secret method of finding just the right kids, the great story about casting Susan Olsen as Cindy, and plus, why he considers Gilligan's Island to be a serious show, for real. We talked about the short-lived reality show version of Gilligan's Island and the differences in shooting ratios on scripted versus unscripted shows. And I finally asked him the question that's been in my brain for almost 50 years. Why did the Mel Brady's hair get curly in the last season after Hawaii? So we're back. We're back again. So we were talking about the, uh, the casting of the children. Casting small children is a really difficult uh, object lesson and how do you get kids? First of all, the youngest one was going to have to be about five or six years old. Well, you can't advertise for a kid of five or six who has 10 years experience. It doesn't work that way. Maybe in the alternate world you were talking about, you could find such a person, but not in this world. So you have to deal with young kids. And I had a method that stood me in good, in good stead, in good, uh, well, whatever it stood me in. I was able to converse with kids. And the question, I don't see the time code moving. Yeah, but it's rolling in the camera. Oh. Yeah, start it out. Sorry. I just All right. thought we had a problem. OK, I apologize. You want to just? No, but thank you. That was good, because if you, if we're not rolling, it's... Well, we are rolling. Yeah, we are rolling. Okay. But it stopped before we... we got, got it. it stopped okay. Off. All right. So you just let me know when we're getting close. Yeah. All right. I'll take their words for it. Okay. You have to. <laughs> no choice. Hire good people. You, you let them do what they're supposed to do. That's... Yeah. If networks would do that, <laughs> that would be... Television would be a hell of a lot different. Oh, well, you know... <laughs> So you, so you bring the children in for your interviews? Yeah, I would, I would interview kids with a coffee table, a low, low table. On, I would be on one chair and the kids would be on the other across the way. And I would put attractive items on the table. And that's a wonderful way to know if a kid will pay attention on a stage where there's a lot of interesting things. And a lot of them can't. A lot of them will get distracted. And you don't want the six distracted kids in the show. You never get it, you would never complete it. So I found this a very useful method. You know, I'd be talking to them, and sure enough, a lot of them, their eyes would glaze as they saw a little fire truck or, or some other little doll or something, which was of greater interest than anything I was saying. And that, that proved to be a very useful device if anybody is interested. In, in, I'm going to use it when I do kid stuff. Yeah, it's a very important thing. Because you see immediately if they shift, they say, hey, that's a little puzzle. I want to try to do that. And then you've lost them. Right. So the, so the kids that you cast, they were not distracted, but they passed the uh, distraction. They passed that test. And then one, one aggravating thing, as far as I'm concerned, because critics will seize anything to destroy it. And uh, Cindy, who was the youngest kid, uh, forgive me a moment, I forgot her name. Susan Olson. Susan Olson, sorry. I won't tell her. <laughs> no, she's a nice girl. Uh, Susan Olson was just a darling little girl. And she, she, the, oh, the, I was the only one that was a foregone conclusion once I talked to her because she had this little lisp and she would she told me the following story in this interview where I was discussing the show with her and I said have you done anything before as I say it's very difficult to find a kid of five or six and she oh she said she had done some commercials I said well what no she and she did a uh, though she said that she had a big part in Gunsmoke. I said, Gunsmoke? She said, yes. I was on a horse. And 
the horse got scared by a snake. It wasn't a real snake, Mr. Schwartz, because they don't have real snakes. They don't, they, they don't want the actors to get bit. But, but this was a fake snake, but the horse didn't know it was a fake snake. Well, I couldn't control myself. I was laughing out loud at this little girl who was just as darling as can be. And then I read one of the write-ups about the show. They say, producers will go to any lengths to sell a character. On this show, Cindy is lisping. And to be forcing a child to lisp in order to be funny and it went on and on about this cruel thing I did to this girl. Well, I say she spoke. She still has a little of a lisp, and this is 35 years later. And, but she's a wonderful girl, a good friend of mine, but she had a lisp, and I thought she was as cute as can be. She was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with those, with those two tails, the pigtails that she had, the blonde pigtails. Anyway, uh, but these are the things you... You know, you get you resent uh, uh, critics who don't know what you're driving at, even with the idea of the show. Do you know how many, how many people? Let's talk about Gilligan's Island for just a moment, which I consider to be a very serious show, because of what it's saying. And I, I must have read fifty different reviews of that show. Not one of them understood that. No, not one critic understood the idea of the show, which was, which was how do people learn to get along with each other. That's the basis of the show, which in my opinion is a reason it's still continuing to run, because it has a very serious basis. Hey look, even Bewitched had, was, about, uh, was about a mixed uh, marriage. Uh, my battery's just stopped. Better your battery than me. Perhaps. <laughs> Five to one. Now, on these reality shows, they use 50 to 1 because you have to have everybody is on camera all the time. And you have to have a dozen cameras running. Around. That's right. Yeah. It's a different technique entirely. <clears throat> Did you learn a lot doing the reality show? Yeah, you learn that the, the writer is, is really the editor. Yeah, exactly right. Because right. yep. you can't write it. So what you do is afterward, you, you film it and then you, you write it from what the dialogue ex post facto that's what i'm doing with this show yeah the same thing yeah um here's a question for i have two questions that have been burning my soul since 1970 well let's quench the and i bet you everybody's waiting to hear this how come after they went to hawaii mike and greg got curly hair on the brady bunch they had straight hair for, hair for three or four years they go to Hawaii, and the next thing you know, their hair is all curly, forever. Not just while they were in Hawaii. I'm not allowed to divulge that. <laughs> Mostly because I don't know. I don't even know what you're talking about. I never noticed that. <laughs> you watch the show, and I'm glad I put it. The you watched the little last season. They, their hair went all curly and puffy. Maybe they got perms afterwards. I think that Mr. Mr. Brady got permed. Really? Right. That's his hair is naturally curly. Naturally curly. Yeah. But it was all straight and flat before, you know, the first couple of seasons, so all straight and flat. Well, okay. He, okay, here's the other question that's been burning in my mind. Ken Barry and Brooke Bundy came on the show for one season, for one episode, and this, the, the episode was called Kelly's Kids. Backdoor pilot or not? Back to a pilot. Tell me about that. I have very few disappointments in my life. Next time, the final part of my interview with the legendary Sherwood Schwartz, creator of Gilligan's Island and the Brady Bunch. Sherwood reveals his greatest disappointment. He lets us in on the secrets of the Brady House, famous visitors to the set, the fun and issues in the Brady Bunch and Gilligan's Island reunion shows, how he stood up to the network by doing an anti-tobacco episode on the Brady Bunch while cigarette ads were still on the air. Plus, as a longtime creator and producer, Sherwood Schwartz talks about the strangest network note he ever got. 
In the meantime, check out our Patreon campaign and help us out. For just a buck a month, you'll get your name on a Pop Goes to Culture episode. You will have my eternal gratitude. For now, what was your favorite Brady episode? Let me know in the comments and we will see you then.